Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us this evening. This is Earth Fair's April Fresh Forum, and in honor of Earth Week, this evening, Meat and Livestock Australia is here to discuss the importance of selecting sustainably sourced beef. Now, Earth Day may be celebrated only on April 22nd each and every year, but at Earth Fair, every day is treated like it's Earth Day. Now, Meat and Livestock Australia will discuss the importance of sustainable agriculture for the environment as well as the health benefits of eating grass-fed beef. Now, Aussie grass-fed beef has an environmental advantage due to the extensive native pastures and climate in Australia. Farming practices in Australia actually minimize the impact on the planet while providing Earth Fair with beef that adheres to its strict food philosophy, which prohibits the use of added hormones and antibiotics in all of our products. Now, our featured speaker this evening is Doug McNichol. Doug is the regional manager for North America at Meat and Livestock Australia, overseeing the company's marketing program to support the role in, of beef, lamb, and goat meat in a sustainable diet in the U.S., Canada, and Mexico. Now, recent former positions include sustainability innovation management roles at Meat and Livestock Australia, as well as the Australian Meat Processor Corporation, as well as various energy services and renewable energy product development roles in the UK. Now, Doug is a partner in his family beef production business in Queensland, Australia. Now, we do have some great information this evening, but as a reminder, all of our attendees have been placed on mute. We have an extremely large crowd. However, we do have a live Q&A with our expert panel that will come after the presentation. So make sure to direct all of your questions down to that Q&A box located at the bottom of your screen. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please join me in welcoming Doug McNichol. Doug. Thank you, Laurie, and hello everyone. It's so fantastic to be with you this evening. And thanks to Earth Fair for the opportunity to discuss the importance of selecting sustainably sourced beef, uh, in this case, grass-fed beef from Australia. And yes, as Laurie mentioned, this event precedes uh, Earth Day this year, and this year's theme is Invest in Our Planet. Uh, so I'd like to showcase how Aussie beef producers are investing in the health of the planet. Um, and look, in addition to planetary health, the Australian beef industry's sustainable development approach also considers the health and well-being of you, the consumer, um, but also the people who work in our fabulous industry, um, as well as animal health and well-being, but also the economic development of the industry uh, and the regional and rural economies they are so integral to. A little bit on who we are first. So Meat and Livestock Australia is a non-for-profit research, development and marketing organisation, and we service Australian cattle sheep meat and goat meat producers. Our purpose is to, to, is to promote the sustainable development of Australia's red meat industry. And um, we also offer our, a global red meat category brand so that consumers around the world know that when products use the Aussie beef brand, Aussie sheep, uh, Aussie lamb or Aussie goat brand, they know it's sourced from Australia. And often our export partners like Sandy from uh, Southern Range Meats uh, also utilise their own private label brands alongside the Aussie beef brand when representing product in the market. First, a little uh, fun fact between Australia and, and, uh, and the USA. Um, there's, a, there's a lot more Americans than there are Australians, so around 13 Americans for every Aussie out there. Um, however, Australia's landmass is comparable uh, to the size of the uh, continental American landmass and ideally suited to grazing livestock over other forms of land use. There are more cattle than people in Australia, and that's why Aussie's a big beef exporter, exporting to over 100 countries around the world. And we've been sending grass-fed beef to the USA for around 50 years. There's three parts to my time with you this evening. The first is you're showcasing uh, how Australia is investing in the planet. Uh, a little bit on the health benefits of eating grass-fed beef. However, full disclosure, I'm not a nutritionist, um, so I'll do my best to relay those points and then leave you with some thoughts on you know, why purchase grass-fed beef from Australia. One of our prime investments um, is showcasing our investment in the planet 
is the Carbon Neutral 2030 initiative. In 2013, the Australian red meat industry launched the Carbon Neutral 2030 initiative, or we call it the CN30 initiative, to achieve net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2030. The initiative is launched on the back of some pioneering research undertaken by Australia's leading science agency, the CSIRO, which revealed that the industry could achieve net zero emissions by 2030. And that's what carbon neutral means. It means that by 2030, Australian beef, lamb and goat production will make no net release of greenhouse gas emissions into the atmosphere. And the industry achieves, uh, aims to achieve this by reducing methane, carbon dioxide and nitrous oxide emissions from production and processing and increasing carbon storage in soils and vegetation in its past grazing land. Now, this is the only non-scientist in a room. This is the only slightly heavy slide. So I'll take a little while to work through it with you so you can all stick with me. Methane is depicted as CH4 in this red circle uh, on the slide is burped out by cattle as they transform the carbon that's in grass and other plants that humans can't eat into meat, milk and a myriad of other useful products for us. The methane burped into the atmosphere lasts around 12 years until it's broken down by sunlight energy and, uh, and the carbon and hydrogen atoms form into water and carbon dioxide, which is then used by plants to grow. And the cycle continues as it has done for as long as ruminant animals have walked the earth. It's important to note that methane from cattle does not contribute to additional at at atomic matter in the atmosphere. Now that's unlike greenhouse gases released from the combustion of fossil fuels for energy production. Oil, gas and coal are mined from the depths of the earth and they're, bu they're burnt to produce varying forms of energy and new carbon dioxide plus other gases are released into the atmosphere as a byproduct of the combustion process. Now, this is a fundamental difference between cattle and coal, plus oil and gas, in the carbon cycle. However, since methane is a greenhouse gas that contributes to global temperature rise, the Australian red meat industry is innovating to limit the amount of methane produced by cattle whilst producing high quality beef profitably. The industry is also employing land management and grazing practices that promote carbon storage and storage uh, in soils as well as in woody vegetation above the ground. This has led to a greater emphasis on working in partnership with the planet's natural carbon cycle to improve carbon use efficiency in the livestock grazing system. That is the efficiency with which Carbon in plants can be converted into meat, milk, or other products for human consumption or use at a price that consumers are willing to pay. More production for the same or fewer emissions to feed a growing population in a changing climate. That's the challenge that Aussie producers are facing, and they're up, they're up for it. The Australian red meat industry's carbon neutral 2030 roadmap is the culmination of 20 years of research and development into productivity led reductions in net emissions from red meat production in Australia. The roadmap includes four key work areas that you can see from left to right on the screen here. The first is industry leadership, and that means investing in leadership capacity um, and enhancing competency amongst industry stakeholders to manage the transition from uh, where we are today into a carbon neutral future. The next work area is greenhouse gas emissions avoidance, which is investing in the technologies and practices to minimise emissions from production and processing operations. Then we move on to carbon storage. And that means investing in technologies and practices to increase carbon storage in grazing lands. Lastly, 
We need to invest or we are investing in integrated management systems that support the adoption of technologies across the value chain that assist with emissions measurement, verification and reporting, plus in improved farm management tools for our, for our ranchers. Now, the roadmap pursues technologies and practices that offer wins, that is, win for the industry, a win for consumers, our livestock, and of course, the environment. You can learn more about our roadmap by clicking this link um, on you, you can see on the screen today, and no doubt this will be shared with you after the webinar. Speaking of technologies, Here's one we'd like to showcase. One is um, this particular technology is called Future Feed, and it's a marine algae that grows naturally on the Australia's coastline. When incorporated in just tiny amounts into cattle's diet, methane emissions are dramatically reduced. This led to the world's first low methane steak being offered in Australia last year. And this technology has been licensed to livestock feed producers in the US as well. So we're not just sending our beef up this way, we're sending our best climate-friendly innovations as well. I was going to show you a short video um, of a rancher in Australia or a red meat producer, we like to call them, talking about the technologies and practices they're employing on farm. However, I've learned and we've had a short uh, tech problem today, so the video doesn't follow through. However, uh, this video forms part of a series of uh, videos that we've called Meet the Maker, which features the true stars of Australia's sustainability show, uh, our producers. Um, we'll make sure you have a link to these videos uh, following the webinar such that you can see what they're doing on farm in your own time. Hi, my name's... Now, the latest figures reported under the Australian Government's National Greenhouse Gas Inventory show that the red meat industry has reduced net greenhouse gas emissions by almost 60% since 2005. That's right, 60% since 2005. And that represents by far the greatest reduction by any sector in the Australian economy. It's also important to note that the red meat industry contributes just 10% of Australia's national greenhouse gas emissions inventory. 90% of emissions come from outside of the industry, mostly from the transportation and electricity generation sectors. The Australian red meat industry is taking climate action whilst continuing to be productive and profitable. And we reckon that makes our industry an attractive supplier of grass-fed beef for people like yourselves. Next, I'm going to touch on some of the health benefits of eating beef in particular grass-fed beef. However, please note, I'm not a nutritionist, medical practitioner, or even a wellness guru. Uh, I'm a rancher with a science background, um, so I'll do my best to explain uh, health and nutrition to you. Our insights are that grass-fed beef is most appealing to people who are looking for healthy food for their families, like this little girl here you can see in the infographic, uh, or to fuel their fitness and well-being lifestyle. However, our health benefits of grass-fed beef really can be enjoyed by all. Now, according to the International Food Information Council, healthy means fresh, low in sugar, good source of protein, and natural to US consumers. The good news is that grass-fed beef from Australia at Earth Fair certainly ticks all of these boxes. Now, all beef is a source of protein for building and maintaining muscle, zinc for fertility and immune function, selenium for heart, muscle and digestive function, brain development and bone maintenance, iron for energy, brain and, muscle and physical growth, and certainly more that is available in white meats like chicken, vitamin B12 for healthy, healthy nervous system, uh, conjugated linoleic acids for reduced fat deposits and improved immune function. And the list goes on. There's more than a dozen essential vitamins and minerals in beef that's naturally occurring that's important for health and well-being. However, generally, grass-fed beef 
has less total fat and therefore less calories than grain-fed beef. That is a key point of difference between grass and grain-fed beef. And then that, the nutritional content of that fat in grass-fed is also different. For example, grass-fed beef is higher in omega-3 fatty acids. It's also packed with useful B vitamins, vitamin A, has higher iron levels and antioxidant levels for heart health, disease prevention, building and maintaining muscle, improving performance during exercise and preventing anemia, particularly if higher levels of iron. And lastly, so why buy grass-fed beef from Australia? Well, Australian grass-fed beef is premium, consistent, naturally nutritious and sustainable. It's the best beef choice for the mindful consumer. Our unique and world-leading eating quality grading system, which pairs with recommended cook methods for all primal cuts, ensures that Aussie grass-fed beef is the most tender, juicy and tasty, and even more consistent than our alter alternatives. As Laurie mentioned at the beginning, Australia's vast grazing lands mean that cattle spend their entire lives on pasture year-round uh, in the natural environment. And beef producers are committed to investing in the planet with world-leading initiatives like the CN30 initiative. Simply because they understand environmental stewardship is integral to the ability to produce food, to be the trusted source of the highest quality protein around the world. If you'd like to learn more about the sustainability credentials of Australian red meat, um, please scan this QR code. Uh, as you can see on, on your screen, you can grab your phones and uh, do your thing now. Um, and if you'd like to connect with us on socials, you can find us using the Aussie beef and lamb handle here um, on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, YouTube, or TikTok. And finally, if you're after some healthy recipes featuring Aussie grass-fed beef, you can scan this QR code or download a free recipe to download a free recipe ebook. And with that, back to you, Laurie. All right, Doug, thank you so much for that information. That has been extremely insightful. And, you know, Earther wants to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to try 100% grass-fed, grass-finished beef. So this Saturday on Earth Day, April 22nd, Earth Fair will be giving away one free pound of grass-fed ground beef with any $20 purchase. Now, we're going to email you that coupon for this free giveaway, so make sure that you're on the Earth Fair email list. Um, and that coupon will be emailed Saturday morning, usually around 7, 7.30 in the morning, and all of our stores open at 8 a.m. So when you go to the Fresh Meat Case to purchase your one free pound of grass-fed beef, you will be given this card that you see here on the screen, um, and you can actually download an entire grass-fed recipe ebook for free, so we'll have that for everybody. Now, before we dive into the live Q&A with our expert panel, I'd like to introduce you all to Sandy Mation. He is the general manager of Serious Foods, who are the import partner of the Australian Meat group in the United States. Now, the Australian Meat Group are behind the Southern Ranges grass-fed beef program uh, that supplies about 80% of all of the grass-fed beef that you find here at Earth Fair. Now, Sandy grew up on a cattle and sheep farm in Victoria, Australia. He's also spent time working in Argentina in cattle operations before moving to the United States to work in the beef side of the industry. So Sandy will give you a quick overview of the Southern Ranges program and will be able to help assist in answering any questions that, that you might have. So Sandy, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for the introduction, Laurie. Um, so Southern Rangers is the brand that we, we've been supplying into Earth Fair for the last three years and hoping that a lot of you on the call have in, enjoyed over the past three years. So some quick highlights of the attributes of the Southern Rangers program that we're currently doing with Earth Fair. So it's a 100% grass-fed beef program. It's all antibiotic free, no added hormones, so no added growth hormones. Uh, it's a free range program and all of the cattle are sourced from the southeast of Australia, um, which means they they graze in a in a temperate climate, which has a sort of moderate to decent rainfall year round uh, and allows for 52 week a year grass 
growth, um, which then enables 52-week a year cattle production and turn off um, to supply to the US, um, which helps negate, you know, some of the seasonal impact things that, that occur up here with, with your livestock production in the US, i.e. Uh, freezing conditions in, in much of the north, north of the country. Thanks, Laurie. Wonderful. Well, again, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we will transition over into the live Q&A now. We have a ton of questions, so I will pass it over to the Earth Fair moderator and we'll dive right in. Thanks so much, Lori. Thanks, Doug and Sandy. I am going to pass off the first question to the two of you, and it's um, a question we've gotten a few different ways and shapes and forms, but can you please... Um, give us a little bit more information on Aussie beef's policy on use of the mRNA vaccine in your beef cattle? Oh, look, excellent question. Um, from a research and development perspective, we have looked at M mRNA technology, particularly off the back of um, COVID-19, where we saw rapid investment in vaccine technology for human health. Um, so as an industry, we, we have looked at it as a, as a pathway to overcome particular um, animal disease um, incursions in Australia. Um, I couldn't speak to the use of it or potential future use in, you know, in, in earth fair product, but I, I, I don't think it's a, an issue there. I mean, we, we, we see M mRNA when used responsibly as a way of promoting animal health and well-being. Um, uh, uh, I'm not sure if that helps answer the question, but Sandy, if you have anything to build on that. No, all I can say is right now, not not currently being utilised. Um, I believe there, there was uh, potential where they were investigating the use of it with foot and mouth and lumpy skin, et cetera, but that uh, hasn't reached the shores of Australia. So We are also looking at it. Um, there is some anecdotal evidence to suggest that it could be a pathway for vaccinating livestock to reduce methane emissions as well through the respiratory system. So um, that's something that we're investigating with relevant research organisations. But I would expect that a mRNA vaccine of any sort um, is, a, is a few years away yet. It takes a little while for any vaccine or any pharmaceutical product to make its way into human or animal treatment. Wonderful. Thank you. Next question is, how is the meat shipped over and how do you keep it fresh? I'll take this one, Doug. Sure. So, so the meat, meat comes over in, um, in, in refrigerated shipping containers on, uh, on, on the ocean, so via sea freight. Uh, it's roughly, call it a 32 to 35-day voyage. Um, during the voyage, those those containers are, are plugged in. They've all got refrigeration units and kept kept around that sort of 30, 32 degree mark. Um, and uh, and that cold chain's maintained all the way through to it gets to the stores at Earth Fair. Thank you. Next question is, um, why not buy grass-fed beef from local ranchers? Isn't shopping local more sustainable than importing from Australia? Great question. Very topical given today's discussion. So happy to have first go at that and, and see if and Sandy would have anything to build. But look, the first thing, the first question to answer is why we're here in the first place. And you know, due to seasonal variability. Um, and the fact that most beef produced in the US is finished through a feed yard, it's very difficult, if not impossible, to source grass-fed beef reliably um, and at scale from local producers. Uh, so that, that's point one. And the grass-fed beef category continues to grow year on year in the US, despite not a lot of domestic production. And it's also important to note that um, the environmental impact of the transportation of the product from Australia into the US um, isn't as big of a deal as some might think. So transport accounts for less than 5% of greenhouse gas emissions, water use and energy use. Um, shipping is a very efficient way of moving product around the world. Uh, and you know we, we look at, it's a very small part of the livestock or footprint of the product. So um, there's some initial thoughts. Well, I'm not sure, Sandy, if you'd like to add anything else. No, I think you nailed it, Doug. 
Perfect. Okay. Another question. Is your beef or meat grass finished or grain finished? I'll take this one. So it's all 100% grass fed and grass finished. So it's the lives, the cattle are on, uh, on pasture from the moment they're weaned from them, from their mothers all the way through to, um, through to harvest. So 100% grass fed throughout the life. Okay. And can you explain if there's any antibiotics in the Aussie beef production? Uh, in, in this in this program that we're talking about, the Southern Rangers program that we supply into Earth Fair, there are not. It is an antibiotic-free program, um, and there are not antibiotics permitted to go into this program. Wonderful. Well, thank you. I am going to direct our last question to Lori. Lori, can you please share where customers can find um, the Meat and Livestock of Australia's product in their local Earth Fair grocery stores. Absolutely. So all fresh grass-fed beef can be found in Earther's meat department in the fresh meat case. And we have many different grass-fed options to choose from, from whole loins that we can actually custom cut into steaks for free for you, to filet mignon, to New York strip steaks, we have it all. So come see us this Saturday, get your free pound of uh, grass-fed ground beef. Just make sure you're signed up for the Earth Fair newsletter. We'll send that coupon via email Saturday morning. You can always sign up at earthfair.com. And then if you would like to share this information here that you've heard tonight this evening we will be posting this video to earth fair's youtube channel at my earth fair that should be up in the next day or two so uh doug sandy thank you so much for joining us this evening again extremely insightful and if we did not get to your question please send us an email at events at earthfair.com and we'll try to answer as many as we possibly can so again thank you for your time uh very great webinar and uh, i look forward to seeing everyone this weekend at Earth Fair. I hope everyone has a safe, happy, and healthy Earth Week. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Laura. Bye. Bye-bye.